You've seen the headlines. Apple's new Vision Pro uh, coming out this morning, and uh, well, I'm wearing one right now. The videos, the jokes. The Apple Vision Pro spatial computing headset is here, and people have plenty to say about it. Some people love it, some people hate it, but one thing is certain. With the introduction of the Apple Vision Pro, augmented reality and virtual reality will become much more mainstream in the coming years. So in this video, I'm gonna review how this revolutionary new technology will change the lives of patients with vision impairment, how it'll change the way we doctors and surgeons approach eye care, and for the everyday user, I'll also explain how this technology will affect their eye health going forward. By the way, I'm Dr. Michael Chua. I'm a board certified ophthalmologist with Pointe Hills Eye Care, and I make videos to help you see better, look better, and feel better too. So let's dive right in to how this technology can be a game changer for patients with low vision. Now, there are already augmented reality headsets in development for patients with low vision. For example, some patients with retinal problems such as macular degeneration can have blind spots or what we call scotomas in their vision. The OcuLens augmented reality headset has special software that allows it to perform image remapping in real time. What that means is that a patient's blind spot is registered and stored in the headset's imaging software. For example, imagine a patient with macular degeneration who has a blind spot right here at the center of their vision. The OcuLens can then use pupil tracking data so it will know exactly where the user is looking. Then it would take incoming images and remap them so that whatever was inside the patient's blind spot is moved slightly to an adjacent area. This way, the patient is able to see the whole image around their blind spot. The OcuLens Phase 3 clinical trials have been slated to begin in February 2024, so we'll have much more information soon about how this augmented reality vision aid technology can help patients with debilitating vision problems. Now, with the introduction of the Apple Vision Pro, think about what new hardware capabilities were just unlocked for researchers and scientists hoping to help patients with low vision. The Apple Vision Pro displays are sharper and clearer than any other virtual reality headset on the market. Somehow, the engineers at Apple were able to pack 23 million pixels, more than what's in a 4K TV, into two micro screens that are about the size of a postage stamp. Okay, great. High resolution is all well and good, but if the video feed coming in from the headset to your eyeballs is choppy and laggy and can't handle that resolution, then it's not going to be that helpful. Because remember, once you put on these headsets, our eyes are covered by those screens. When we look around, we're not actually directly looking at the world around us. But what we're seeing is a video feed of our surroundings taken by cameras on the front of the headset and fed through to the monitors that are inches from our eyes. But thanks to Apple's R1 chip, the pass-through, we'll call it, basically feels almost like natural vision. Apple has shown us that its Vision Pro can take incoming streams of the world around us into the camera on its headset, run it through its processor, then spit out dual 4K footage to our eyeballs in less than 12 milliseconds. And because the video streams through the Apple Vision Pro are so smooth and without lag, people have recorded themselves doing things like catching objects or playing ping pong, all without a hitch. Couple this with advanced and accurate pupil tracking technology. I mean, the way you navigate through menus and type using the Apple Vision Pro is with your eyes. So they have this pupil tracking technology very accurately calibrated. And so we can quickly start to think about the way software developers will be using this technology in coming years to help our patients with low vision. They can use a model similar to what OcuLens is doing basically moving objects around blind spots for patients with macular degeneration to provide patients with enhanced vision in real time. Or you can create software that can increase the contrast of text or objects, and this may allow people with poor vision to see street signs or menus at a restaurant more easily. Or maybe you create software that allows patients to zoom in on objects or text if they're having trouble reading smaller text while they're walking around. Or perhaps you can make software using the Apple Vision Pro that allows you to convert any text that you're looking at to audio. So patients who are having trouble seeing text can have it read to them instead, all again in real time. Espresso, 40 Americano, 40 Latte, 50 Cappuccino, 50. Sure, you can do some of these things now with the phone in your pocket, but first you have to take out your phone, open up an app, scan the text or an image, then have it analyzed or have it read to you. With the Apple Vision Pro, the potential is there to offer this capability, but through a much more seamless experience. So we can see how this hardware has the potential to dramatically impact the quality of life for patients with poor vision. Okay, the next way the Apple Vision Pro can change life as we know it is how doctors approach medicine and surgery. Now, believe it or not, using augmented reality headsets to perform surgery is already a reality for us eye surgeons in the US. 
The Bionics One is an augmented reality headset which takes incoming video feeds from a surgical microscope. Now, when we're performing eye surgery, we have incredibly small margins of error. If you make the wrong move in someone's eye, just fractions of a millimeter, that can create a complication and poor vision for the patient. So we depend greatly on having perfect 3D vision and depth perception while we're performing surgery because we need to know exactly where our instruments are in someone's eyes at all times. What makes these augmented reality headsets like the Bionics One or the Apple Vision Pro particularly useful for surgery is that since they have two screens, one for each eye, it allows us to maintain depth perception even if we're looking through the headset. Compare this to trying to do surgery using just a flat monitor or a screen. The surgeon's depth perception and their surgical performance will be severely limited by the 2D screen. The other key advantage of using an AR headset for surgery is the ability to overlay digital images onto your surgical field. So for example, maybe you wanted to look up some patient information or to look up the retinal photos and retinal scans for surgery. You'd be able to do all of that while you're in the case operating. Or you can use special filters that helps you to better visualize particular structures in the patient's eye. Or you can use the headset software to help you line up lens implants in the eye after you implanted them during cataract surgery. There's a lot of useful applications in which augmented reality can aid the surgeon during surgery. And with the release of the Apple Vision Pro, with its incredible displays, its powerful R1 chip, and of course the brain power of any development team wanting to create software for the device, it'll be fun to watch what kind of software and surgical advancements we'll be able to make over the next few years to improve outcomes for patients. Beyond the operating room, the Apple Vision Pro can have several uses in the ophthalmology office as well. One key advancement we've seen in recent years for patients with glaucoma has been the introduction of virtual reality visual field testing. Now, glaucoma is a disease in which there's progressive damage to the optic nerve. As the optic nerve gets damaged, people lose their peripheral vision. In order for us to track the progression of a patient's glaucoma, we run visual field tests, which are carefully calibrated tests that allow us to objectively measure the health of a patient's peripheral vision. Usually how this test is run in most ophthalmology offices is you place your head inside a large computer that has a dome that surrounds your head and eyes. Then we have you look straight ahead at a target. Then we flash a bunch of little lights in your peripheral vision and you press a button on a little clicker every time you see a flash of light. The computer has a built-in pupil tracking system so that it'll catch you if you end up moving your eyes. You don't want to move your eyes during the test because if you're looking all around, we won't be able to accurately test your peripheral vision. In recent years, these large, expensive visual field devices have been replaced with much smaller virtual reality headsets, which are also able to accurately perform the visual field tests with a much smaller footprint. The Apple Vision Pro has much of the same hardware, if not better hardware, than what's in these visual field devices. And so all it would take is an app developer to create their own calibrated visual field testing software for the Apple Vision Pro to make it a powerful visual field testing device as well. The other key benefit I could see with this technology being more available on mainstream devices like the Apple Vision Pro is that patients with the Apple Vision Pro will be able to run the visual field test on their own in the comfort of their home and send the results to their doctor rather than having to come into the doctor's office every few months to run the test. This will give patients more flexibility while also giving doctors more data about how their patients with glaucoma are doing. Okay, so we've talked about how the Apple Vision Pro can impact the lives of both patients and doctors, but what about for everyday users? What impacts will the spread of virtual reality and augmented reality headsets have on our vision and eye health going forward? Before we dive into answering those questions, I wanted to tell you about my optimized newsletter. If you want science-backed tips on how to protect your vision and health delivered straight to your inbox, you can sign up for my optimized newsletter at michaelchuamd.com. So as we think about how the Apple Vision Pro will affect our eye health in the future, I do worry about the potential of it negatively impacting our eye health. Now, to be clear, there are no documented clinical research studies that have established a link between long-term augmented reality or virtual reality headset use and poor vision outcomes. But if we take a closer look at how technology has evolved over the last few decades, we notice a trend of screens coming closer and closer to our faces. With the radio, there was no screen to look at. Then TVs came along and we had a screen across the living room. Then came computers and monitors, which on average sit about two to three feet in front of our faces. Then smartphones, which on average we hold about a foot away from our face. 
And now we have these spatial computing headsets with high definition screens literally inches from our eyeballs. And if we look at what clinical research is out there, the data is actually mixed on whether more near work or time using digital screens increases the risk of developing nearsightedness or myopia. Despite this, many studies have confirmed that spending less time outdoors in bright sunlight is a risk factor for developing myopia. And having myopia isn't just about the inconvenience of having to wear glasses or contact lenses. Higher levels of myopia, as in prescriptions such as minus five or worse, are associated with a significantly increased risk of macular degeneration, retinal tears, retinal detachments, glaucoma, and cataracts. And so if these virtual reality headsets are so entertaining, so captivating that they cause kids to spend more time indoors rather than playing outside, then that can definitely have an effect on the risk of developing myopia as they grow. The other concern with these headsets is that even if you are outside wearing one of these, since the headset makes a light proof seal around your eyes, the good, bright, protective outdoor sunlight, which helps to prevent nearsightedness, won't be able to reach your eyes. The other eye effects that many Apple Vision Pro users have already reported with prolonged use are dry eye and eye strain. Research studies have shown us that while we're at rest, we typically blink our eyes about 20 times per minute. But when we're focusing on screens, that blink rate drops down to five to seven times a minute. And these longer periods between blinks can cause our eyes to dry out and cause us to have symptoms of dry eye and eye strain. I do anticipate as more and more users use this device for longer periods of time that I'm going to hear more complaints from patients about dry eye and eye strain. So with the release of the Apple Vision Pro, we are entering a new era of technology, which they like to call spatial computing. It's a world where we're going to still see everything around us, but with an added layer of augmented reality and digital enhancement to our surroundings. And it'll be interesting to see how this technology will change life and our vision as we know it. I'm Dr. Michael Chua with Plenty Hills Eye Care. See you next time.